Let's play a word association game. I'm going to say some words, and in your minds, I want you to marry up which words you would associate closest to a traditional university degree and which you would associate with an apprenticeship. Okay, ready? Prestigious. Manual. Academic. Practical. If your mind went straight to university degree when I said the word prestigious, you're not alone. In 2023, UCAS discovered that 76% of people polled associated prestige with traditional higher education, university, whereas just 4% associated prestige with apprenticeships. This is despite degree apprenticeships offering the exact same end result. People tend to think that apprenticeships are more manual, practical, not academic, and certainly not prestigious. I'm here today to prove that those stereotypes are just plain wrong. At 18, I dove straight into the world of corporate IT with my first apprenticeship in project management and then my degree in project management. A month ago, I just started my third apprenticeship, which is a management and leadership postgraduate diploma and master's degree at Cranfield University. So as you can see, I've pretty much lived and breathed the apprenticeship life since I started my, my career. They've changed my life forever, and I couldn't imagine going in any other direction. But not everyone shares this view, and I've always been curious as to why. So I'm going to take you on a journey today. I'll run a mini apprenticeship on apprenticeships, if you like, and we'll discover why together. So let's dive in by first defining exactly what an apprenticeship is here in the UK. Apprenticeships simply combine working and studying in a mutually complementary way. People usually think of apprentices as 16 year old school leavers working in manual trades, but times have changed. And nowadays that couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, you can become an apprentice at 16, but you can also work your way up to a master's degree level at any age, not only for training, but for retraining into new careers too. And just look at how many industries you can do an apprenticeship in. Did you know you could do an apprenticeship in law, in sales and marketing, in architecture? Did you know that on the government website today, there are over 30,000 apprenticeship vacancies listed. So I'm wondering if you can do an apprenticeship in practically any industry and by doing an apprenticeship, you get paid a salary, free qualifications, the chance to earn a degree and vital experience that sets you apart in the job market. Why are we biased against apprenticeships when making decisions on higher education? I guess when I lay it all out like that, you're probably sat there a bit curious. Why don't more people do apprenticeships? Well, let's start at school. A survey of recent school leavers found that two out of three students felt they were being pushed down the university route by teachers. This was my own personal experience. At 17, I sat down for careers guidance with a teacher and he asked me about my plans. And I honestly answered, I'm not sure yet. I kind of like psychology, but I don't really know what I would do with it. He then asked me what my A-level predicted grades were, to which I answered three A's. And without missing a beat, he says, well, you're going to university then, right? You don't want to waste your academic potential. And then it wasn't until I got home that day and I recounted that conversation with my dad. And he said to me, well, I can see how your teacher got there. Your teacher probably went from school to university to, oh wait, 
back to school again in a closed loop without experience outside of an academic institution. So of course he's going to push you to the next institution. That's what he knows. But tell me, do you want to become a clinical psychologist, a researcher, a therapist? And I already knew that I wasn't interested in any of those roles. He said to me, if you've got no career path, maybe don't spend three years and over £50,000 studying it at university. <laughs> well, that conversation was a major wake-up call and a perspective I'd never been exposed to before. It was then that I really started looking at apprenticeships, applying for everything at first and then slowly honing in on particular roles. Which brings me nicely to my second reason. Young people pursue university because it's easier to think about what you're interested in rather than how your skill set can serve you in the future. Let's face it, young people, we're stressed out about exams, trying to see your friends and still have a life. Whilst applying to university isn't exactly easy, at least you only have to do it once. Whereas to apply for apprenticeships, you've got to read through countless job descriptions, write cover letters, tweak your CV, and it's a much more labour intensive process. And that's assuming that you know what kind of apprenticeship you want. 17 year old Georgia had absolutely no idea what kind of role she wanted, and so applied for everything possible. And it was through this process that I really started to realise that my skill set was tailored towards roles in project management. They wanted organised, good communicators with drive and enthusiasm. So despite not truly understanding the role yet, I applied more and more to project management vacancies and eventually got accepted onto my dream apprenticeship the day after rejecting all my university offers on UCAS what day that was. <laughs> if I had pursued the university route, I still would have had to have gone through this exact same process only three years later with added pressure and debt. So what I'm saying here is we have to help young people consider the linkage between what they spend time learning and the job prospects they'll get. Apprenticeships offer you that more direct link but it's challenging to figure this out at 17 while studying for exams. My former school have implemented a dedicated apprenticeship evening that I speak at, and every year the room gets fuller and fuller. To all the teachers watching, could you implement something similar? I'd love to see more support from schools and colleges and possibly even specialist workshops that could come and help young people to find their paths. Now parents, on to earning potential, because of course you want your children to be able to look after you in your older age. And you're in luck. 60% of people think apprentices get paid a lower wage than those who have a degree, but this is no longer the case. In fact, the Sutton Trust actually found degree apprentices have greater lifetime earning potential than graduates from non-Russell Group University and they don't need to pay back any student loans. And young people, don't you want to go on nice holidays and get on the property ladder sooner? Now, there are some careers that you do tend to need to have a university degree to access. Things like medicine, dentistry, and some forms of engineering. And these are high paying fields. But my point here is, if you're not particularly academic, or sure of your career path, don't go to university just for the sake of it. You could earn more and have greater earning potential by doing an apprenticeship. But let's not assume that young people are always money oriented. University is fun. Why would you want to work all day when you could be letting your hair down and going clubbing four times a week? Well, while well, apprenticeships might contain a little less weekday partying, they're certainly still fun. I've had the chance to travel internationally, attend swanky award ceremonies, charity dinners with celebrities, regular socials and more. In fact, some of the events I attended were once in a lifetime opportunities that I wouldn't have traded for 
all the club nights in the world. Now, finally, there's the prestige argument. Now, let's be honest, there's so much nuance to this argument because a university degree from Oxford or Cambridge will have more prestige than a level three apprenticeship in business admin, for example. But the reverse is also true, that an apprenticeship with Google or Microsoft will have more prestige than a random bachelor's degree from a non-Russell Group university. To overcome this, we must stop using blanket statements and black and white thinking. Teachers, I know this is so hard when schools are still using university attendance for judging as, as a metric of success for judging a school. But parents too, I really want you to listen to this bit. Times have changed and we don't want our students, sons and daughters wasting three years of their life with potentially 50,000 pounds of debt hanging round their shoulders because of unfounded biases towards university. We can't feed people the idea that university is always a better option than apprenticeships and vice versa. My dad understood this because he was able to sit down with my sister and I without any bias and help us discover our most suited next steps. Whilst he supported my apprenticeship journey, he equally supported my sister with her biology degree. And this was the right decision for her. Her confidence has totally blossomed at university and it gave her the chance to develop her lifelong skills in the right environment. Different people need different conditions to be successful. So let's recap. We've delved into various misconceptions today, showing how people come to favour university degrees over apprenticeships. But picture this, a future where apprenticeships are celebrated as much as university degrees. A future where academic study and hands-on experience stand shoulder to shoulder, providing everyone the chance to thrive in their chosen fields. To achieve this, we must first shift our own perspectives and be really honest about our conscious and unconscious biases. Let's make it our mission to support our young people to be curious about all of their options. Let's help our young people pursue financially stable, fun futures, emphasising that fulfilment and happiness outweigh prestige. Let's rewrite the narrative together. Teachers, please show this talk in schools. Parents, use this talk to discuss higher education with your children. Young people, send this talk to your mate that just goes quiet when the rest of the group start talking about their plans. Because the future of education isn't about one size fits all. It's about a mosaic of opportunities that cater to every talent and ambition. Remember Nelson Mandela's powerful words. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Let's make sure that weapon includes every form of learning, every opportunity and every dream. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.